Hello there. Hello. We're back. Mm-hmm. You just saw us, but it's fine. We're back. We're, We're very back. popular. I know. I answered it so well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, look at that. Look at those numbers. We bought a good, nice little bit of numbers. Some people yeah. who were very excited about, apparently, about the fact that we were making episodes, which is nice. It's like, oh. It's very okay. nice. If you like watching our episodes, please let us know. We really appreciate it. We love yours. Please just, you know, just yeah, type it down. It's helpful because then also it does things to the algorithm, I believe. I don't know the specifics. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It should be doing something. Uh, and if you don't know who we are, then Katie's going to tell you. Oh, yeah, oh she's bit. Katie, by the way. That, that's my bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the spiel. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello everyone. Don't know why I did that. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I am Katie. That's Lily K. And that's the whole thing. That's in. You, you want you to see our like, proper now. little spiel? You could go into the description of our video. I wrote a whole thing when we started doing this. That's true. I'm I'm feeling Crowley today. Mm. We're not gonna talk about Crowley today, but you know. That's the deal. Soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to do like a, a really small section of catch up on things that we didn't really Jesus. <laughs> caught up on. We're trying to Just do like, a small catch up after two months of not doing Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Just an honorable mention list, basically. We, we're going to do like a proper episode where we talk about like, you know, properly, like, what did you guys miss that we watched and didn't talk about? If that makes sense. Uh, and then we're going to get right into it. So, honorable mentions, Katie, from the uh, top of your head. Um, uh, first thing that comes to mind is that I watched Witch Volume 2, which was great. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, you know, I uh, did you did you listen to the song I sent you? Yes, it's very great. Oh, so gorgeous. I uh, just, yeah, love a man. That's, that's all. He's great. Um, yeah, uh, it was it was great. I'm gonna watch it, probably watch it again. Um, it's it was the best season they've done so far. Mm. High praise. Um, it, I, I, I hear it's a lot close to the books. A lot of things that come straight out of the books, um, mm. which are very exciting. Um, uh, it is very annoying trying to read anything about it because people are so obsessed with the fact that Henry's not going to be back next season. Like I get it, oh, guys, yeah. but like, can we? <laughs> we talk about the actual material in you can't there's no nobody's objective which is very annoying <laughs> Fair. um but it's fine i have my my little uh corner of the internet where we talk about askia and how important he is <laughs> <laughs> which is fair he's so important he's so important he's so important um and then i watch good omens the day after but we're not talking about that today not yet not yet we're gonna get there <laughs> not yet um those are the, the main things i haven't um I took a break on Saturday, even though I was meant to watch this. <laughs> I, I took a break because I was like, yeah. you know what? Two days of catching up on television. I think I need to not do that. Yes. Yes. Fair. That's a fair point. Uh, in the past week, so I feel that that's a good place to stop. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to shamelessly self promote myself as well. In right. The process. <laughs> Uh, I got obsessed with a new series uh, and thankfully got renewed for season three. So I'm very happy. But you can still go and read my article about it. It's called From. Mm. Uh, and it's it's great, but great uh, series. Uh, if you loved Lost uh, and and you are that generation that started to get into TV because of Lost and whatever, watch this. It's excellent. I just love it so much. The best... Um... Oh fuck! What's his name from from Romeo and Juliet? Um, I can't remember how to say his name. I was making a whole thing. Harold Perrineau is that's yes, but I can't remember. He's he's so good as this one guy in Romeo and Juliet. I can't remember how to say. What did he play? He um, Mercutio. Yes, him. Yes. Okay. Which room were we in, Julie? And what was was that uh, like? The um, the uh, fucking Baz Luhrmann one was was um. Really? Yeah, he's so good that? in it. <laughs> I miss that. Mercutio. Mercutio. We we see Mercutio, Mercutio in Hungarian. So I'm just. It's one of those things where it's, I've seen it written down so much, and I haven't watched it. It's it, like I, bits of it were in there, and I couldn't remember the whole thing, and it was driving me a little bit mad. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm going to check it out now that because I love Harold. He's great. He liked my article as well, so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> happy days. It's it's so yeah. So I'm I'm going to yell about it. Like you know, the article is basically about why you should watch it. So just watch it. Just read it. It's fucking and good. Then watch it. And yeah, just do both. It's it's an experience. I watched a lot of not surprising news. I watched a lot of Korean uh, movies and TV shows. Uh, I will highlight one for now and then we're going to talk about it in another time uh it's it's an older one it's like i think it came out in 2016 but it's it's just so charming and just wonderful it's called she was pretty and it's just ah. i have a feeling it's probably my, my mother's been watching a lot of um korean dramas for the past few weeks i love your mom you know then yeah, she knows know. then <laughs> uh and another big thing that i will just highlight quickly is nimona watch nimona beautiful animation beautiful oh, nimona. story yeah it's just fucking love it. cried my eyes out cried my eyes out it's beautiful beautifully done especially at the end i was like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and i'm watching good Woman's now as well oh I did. I did see um, Mission Impossible Seven a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you did, uh, yeah. and it it ruled. <laughs> I had to sit in my car for twenty minutes afterwards, being like, <laughs> "I just." It was the last hour of it. It's very stressful. I just believe you on them. It was very stressful. It's not my favorite of them, but it was very good. And also, it's been kind of crashing at the box office because of the whole Barbenheimer thing. So if you're at all interested in a good action movie, I would recommend going to see Dead Reckoning because I think it should do better. Yeah. Listen to Katie, yeah? Please. Uh, all right. We're going to do a proper one, as I said before. And uh, now we're going to jump uh, on to today's topic, which is right behind Katie, Secret Invasion, the new Marvel TV miniseries, limited series, I believe. Uh, which is strange, like especially at the end, we're gonna get there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I will first before we we say anything about the series, I will quickly say that this was my favorite comic run like ever. Like I have all the Secret Invasion comic books, and I fucking love them. So I am disappointed, <laughs> guys. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's pretty mid. Oh, I'm I so disappointed to you. The level of mediocre the whole thing is, and the thing is that it, 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 it the potential is there. It could have been so good. Like I don't even understand because I I read you know a lot of things about it. How can you tell your creators not to read the fucking comics? Is that a thing that happened? I don't know anything about it. It is. It is a thing that happened. Like you know, don't read the Secret Invasion comics, and I'm like. Great. So it's, it started in a great place then. Yeah. I was like, why, why would you do that? Just why? And there are elements in there that are obviously from the comics, but like, huh? <laughs> and it shows. And it shows. There are some beautiful moments in there. I'm just going to put it out there quickly that I, I enjoyed, like, especially like small moments. But then there are so many problems with it that I, I wrote to Katie that this is my very first time where I'm properly disappointed. In a mm. Marvel project, which says a lot because I am very biased with Marvel, Marvel and <clears throat> yeah, actually, because and I said because I I have a there's a point I have to yes. that um, yes in that I think that this is kind of the culmination of a lot of issues mm -hmm. that Marvel's had for the past few years. But basically, for me personally, basically since Endgame, they've been churning out content in a way that feels like they're just making stuff for the sake of making stuff as opposed to the way that they you know did it before which you know had their moments of like putting stuff out for the sake of like filling in a gap mm. but for the most part you had a lot of really strong content I you know I, what I had part of the way through watching it was this sort of over, this hit of being like man you know what was good see <laughs> the winter soldier <laughs> And this could have been like the Winter Soldier, like, but it, it has elements of it feeling like it should have been like an like an action spy thriller. Yeah, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's just. It's it starts it's off vague, like that. It's just vague Marvel property that yeah. doesn't really do anything with the stuff that it has. Nope. 
And I just feel like, I, for me, it, it, it was like, the, it, it was just another hit in the coffin of just like mediocre Marvel content that I feel like they've been putting out for a little bit. And it's sad, you know, like yeah. the, they do have still very good titles in there. Like I will defend the Eternals till the day I die. It, it was, it was it, it, that at least that, for, it, and I say this often. That at least made a big swing, right? Yeah, it, it was like it, it went for something. I don't necessarily think it hit on all the things it wanted to. I think it did a lot of things that were way too big, but yeah. it tried. <laughs> It tried, and it you know it was like the thing that everyone was whining about, like make something different. It was different. It was different, and it I think it was a good different, and and it was something that opened up a lot of extra things. I I will I love Shang Chi. I think that was you know mm-hmm. such such a good uh, uh, swing at introducing a new character and a new what, superhero. What year did Shang Chi come out again? Uh. uh... 20 that's i love i love when 21? i try to, try to I think yeah 2021 yeah. Right. yeah that's the one uh no way home yeah people are now finding it trendy to shit on it on twitter which is which is now x so no it's know. twitter <laughs> it's twitter uh <laughs> uh but i love no way home Real and quick, just yes. because i just noticed it yes. random segue or yes. like side point Shang Chi, the woman who played uh, uh, Zhu, uh, I believe, yes, um, is now in The Witcher playing a woman called Milva. There you go. And she's very fun in it. Actually, I really enjoy her. People are very excited about her. I still haven't read the book, so I don't know anything. But like, <laughs> they're like, the "Oh, you- God, she's here!" And I'm like, "I'm gonna take your word for it." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, that's a great character. I remember. She, she's very yeah. fun so far. She's not been in it. She's only been in a couple of episodes, but she's her her relationship to with Geralt and Yaska is very funny at the moment, and I enjoy okay. it. I'm just going to take your word on it. It is fun. Okay. Uh and what else? What else? The new Guardians. Yeah, that's like what three things over the. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put here Wonder Vision as well because I think Wonder Vision for me, like Wonder Vision has was on the higher end of the good stuff. And I was talking about this a little bit yesterday with my friend Matt. But I still think the end of Wonder Vision kind of (laughs) sucked. Why? Because it went from this really interesting, strange, um, paranoid piece. To Marvel shooty bang bang, and it should have been the weird thing the whole way through. And I, I, I found that disappointing. I'm not saying that the ending was like terrible, but it, like, it, it got rid of all the stuff that they made at the beginning that was interesting. Part of one of the one of the many reasons that this I found to be really just like I was bored. I can't even. I got bored watching this. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, we're at, we're talking about Synchrony Invasion now. Uh, well, I guess no spoilers, <laughs> but like, who really gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Um, I will. But, well, I I don't think we're just gonna like go through the whole thing. It's it's just gonna be like an overall discussion, just picking out like moments, basically. Uh, and since I can't keep it in myself. I will quickly say, because I saw a lot of people argue about this, Gaia becoming a super scroll is actually from, well, the super scroll part especially is from the comics. So that's something that they that they took from there. So there's a being, it's, I, it's not Gaia in the comic books that becomes like this superhero or supervillain, whatever, however you look at it, uh, who has all the powers of all the superheroes. So that's actually comic accurate. I'm just going to put it out there because a lot of people are like, Here's oh. the thing. It may be comic accurate. I still hate it. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I just, I find it that's the, they, like, it, that to me is so boring. Why is it boring? I want to <laughs> know. Because she's so, like, now at this point, now she's got all of, like, all of these powers in a way that is just like, it, it's that thing that happens when you 
are just trying to top the last thing you're doing, right? You get to the point where they're like, well, we got to make this person more powerful than the last person. So now she's got all of the powers. And I'm like, I don't want that. <laughs> Like what? Are, what? Are, what are her flaws now? Like what? what how is she beaten? How? What? It would I? She's not. She's now too powerful, and it becomes a bit of a like. Well, how do you put anybody up against her and make that fight fair? Hmm. Also, it did the exact thing I was just talking about, and that whole fight was just like, oh look, marble shooty bang bang. <laughs> It's just a lot of fucking lasers throwing around. I'm like, okay, fine. You didn't like the ending then? I didn't like the ending. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like most of it. <laughs> fair, fair. Talk, let's talk about first, like, let's let us let us talk about the things that you liked. I liked Olivia Coleman. Oh, yeah, she fucking rules. And I think, honestly, on the flip side of that, one of the things that this series suffers from is the fact that she's not in it enough. And and really annoyingly as well, because the press around it made it made it sound like it was a two hander between her and Samuel L. Jackson. Kind of, yeah. And it wasn't. Not really. <laughs> she was kind of barely in it. Yeah, she was there, and, and when she, she was, was there, there, she was great. She, she was so great. <laughs> yep, true. And then I love watching Olivia Coleman play people who are slightly unhinged. It's very fun. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. She, I love that my girl is in there, Amelia Clark. Fucking yes, she was very Clark. good. To be fair, I did. I yeah. you know she's she's always very watchable. Like there were a couple of moments where I was looking at her like, God, she's so skinny, so skinny. <laughs> Please, <laughs> and yet she eats something. <laughs> like I was right. That's just like that. We're not. I'm not shaming her or anything. It's just no, 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 no. <laughs> that's probably just her body type. I'm not. <laughs> it's just, but there's a part of me that's just like. You put like a couple more layers on her. She just looks like she needs being <laughs> cold. <laughs> I don't know. Fair, 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 fair. But she was great. She was yeah. great. I loved her. Uh, I loved the casting. To be fair, mm. I think uh, uh, Gravik was was a great choice. True. Uh, yes, he, he was great. I did enjoy him a lot. He was he was really great. Uh, once again, like with all Marvel villains, the, he was very underused. There was so much war in there yeah. uh, for Gravik. Uh, he's in Barbie as well. If you didn't know that, I like... was I'm going to look up because uh, his accent is a very specific. Um, yes, English I don't know his accent. name. I'm so I, sorry, Kingsley Ben Adair. Yes, British actor. Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, yep. Apparently he's from London, but it's a very specific type of like London accent that you don't, I feel like, hear very much mm. on TV. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, he was in Peaky Blinders. I knew he was fucking familiar. <laughs> he, he did a lot of things, actually. Um, but yes. it was so, so fun, like watching <laughs> Secret Invasion and then going to see Bobby. And there he is. <laughs> Completely different <laughs> character, whatever. And I'm like, oh. Hello there. <laughs> that was our reaction. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I love the casting of it. Yes, the uh, good cast was great. All of them. Really good. One thing we can't fault Marvel on is the fact that they cast really good actors. Really good actors. That's very true. Um, I really liked, and also afterwards, I really hated the whole thing with Talos and and Nick Fury uh, because Ben Mendelsohn <laughs> is great. And yes, I, fucking, I fucking hated how how they ended him basically like it, it was so ungracious it, nothing afterwards so felt to me like they went we have nothing else we can do with this character i guess we'll just kill him yeah yeah it <laughs> kind of felt like that and I, I was so pissed off because talos is one of my favorite characters from uh captain marvel uh i think he's he's just such a fun and great character that you know ben Mendelsohn was like so in it and and did such a good job with it and i was so excited that he's he's gonna just rock with you know fury and they could go on this whole uh let's end this uh, secret invasion thing and i'm like episode four comes in what <laughs> what are you serious the, the, what I was so confused and so angry at the same time. I think that was the point where I was like, fuck you guys. <laughs> just straight up, fuck you all. Yeah, just so annoying. It's, it's one of your best characters. Yeah. I, it, uh, why? Like, why? Why do it this way? 
I understand. Like it didn't. It didn't have any weight to it. For no, me. it didn't. It had no weight to it at all. Nothing. Like we didn't see anyone who stood with Talos. Basically, it seemed like all the schools Everybody were like, was just with, like with... Oh, "He sucks." <laughs> Yeah, every everyone was with Gravik, so it felt like that it's a completely pointless like mission, basically. And and I, I was like, what? You kind why? of don't get the sense of like why this guy was a good general in the first place. Like you don't, yeah. you don't feel that at all. And they keep telling you that supposedly he was, and then they really emphasize afterwards that he's no longer that way. <laughs> like, oh, he's bad now. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> It was so annoying. Uh, like, uh, and I I was hoping because they actually cut out a scene that's in the trailer uh, where Gaia, you know, gets to the scene uh, where her father died and, and he just sobs. Uh, he, sorry, she just sobs over his body. And, and it's it, it's like it's in the trailer for like a good few seconds and it's just gone. And now it's just a very lazy funeral and uh, Nick is not even there, uh, although his best friend basically died and and it's just, he's gone. That's it. Done. I don't think um, Gaia's arc in it is particularly clear either. No, no. Um, well, to be fair, that that's just a, a symptom, or like, um, yeah, no, a symptom of the rest of the thing, which is that the plot isn't very good. It would be good. <laughs> it would be good. <laughs> it would be good if they stuck to the fucking. <laughs> it's like it started off so good. I really like the first episode. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, we're getting into that spy thriller thing. The good. opening to be a bit heavy-handed. Uh, just in the the exposition of the whole thing, I was sitting there like, okay, I get what you're going for here, but like, this is a bit intense. Mm. Um, just in a sort of like, I don't think it was a particularly well written exposition piece, to be honest. Fair. <laughs> but fair, I did fair. like the, like I I appreciated the, what they were going for in the sort of like twisty mm. turning, like, oh, who can you trust? And yet they kind of gave up on that. Like half they did like, yeah. about two episodes in. They kind of did, yeah. Just like, what was it? I sent you a text, um, which didn't apparently come through until today. Yeah, um, fun times. Woohoo! I love it when WhatsApp works. Happy days. Yeah. Yeah, I said, I'm going to be honest for a show about misinformation. A lot of people take a lot of information at face value. Just the number of times where it, it was like, like she's the guy is meant to be smart, clearly. Yeah. But... The number of times he was like looking at her and then said a piece of like vital information, and she's like, "Well, that must be real. Better send that on." It's like, "You fucking idiot! Nobody, don't be stupid." <laughs> it's like you're just holding your head, like, "What is like? I'm the traitor." What is going on? <laughs> you know, that was my thought <laughs> throughout the whole thing. Like, it's I, I can't. I like I can't say this enough that it's such a good comic run and you know i get that when they made the decision to make this into a tv series Mm. they basically shot themselves in the leg Mm. uh because you know in the comics it's not just nick fury let's just start off like that like Mm. uh you know the whole thing is like the superheroes being involved and being replaced by the screws and whatever it was a very big part of the Marvel comics and I'm like okay you're taking that out that's fine that's okay yeah you, you the can intention approach it clearly, from a... like the intention clearly is to like they were trying to make a, a, a more personal story for Nick Fury I don't think they did a particularly good job of it <laughs> nah. especially as there's multiple scenes in it where I'm like fuck I forgot how good an actor Samuel L. Jackson is mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly love the scenes with him and Telos and his wife as well. Priscilla oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because those scenes were like See, so good. I thought the acting in those scenes was great. great. I found the dialogue to be really hit and miss. But yeah, yeah, very much so. Very much it's so. just like I, 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 it's the way that they went from this like happy reunion at the end of episode two like oh look he came home to his wife and he has a wife who's a scroll that's really interesting um and then immediately they're suddenly like side-eyeing each other 
and mm. being like, well, apparently we're not trusting each other anymore. I couldn't get a fucking beat on their relationship for 90% of the thing. And I and considering the fact that this is clearly something that's important to him, it would have been very important to make the audience care about it. It's kind of hard to make them do that when you can't figure out if what's going on between them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very fair point. That's a very fair point. So, yeah. Shame, just... Both of them were great. Uh, Very I don't know good. What the name of the, who, the woman who played Aura uh, was? Hang on, I'm looking it up. Please do. Charlene Wood Woodard. Uh, but she was great. I liked her a lot. <laughs> yep. Very good indeed. Again, wonderful casting. Um, what did we think of Roddy? So, okay, a couple of things because I didn't watch this for ages. Yes. Uh, until after the season came out. And I wasn't yes. doing, like, it, it, to be honest, not a whole lot was coming up on my feed anyway, but I also wasn't actively trying to avoid spoilers. Mm. Um, so I, the thing, things I saw before I watched were Maria dying, which honestly I actually think is a, to, to put stakes in a show, that's a really good idea. Mm. Um, shame that it doesn't really do anything beyond that moment. Nope. Um, and the other thing was I accidentally scrolled past a gift set of the moment where they revealed that Rody was actually rather um, like that bit in the mirror. But I'm going to be honest, anybody with two fucking eyes could tell that wasn't Rody. Yep. Yep, I agree. I like, think I was it was like, very clear. Like really, really obvious. I was like, God, even if I didn't know this, I'd know that he was not being himself. Yeah, and apparently he's not being himself in Civil War. Oh. Yep. Did did Don Cheadle know that? Uh, apparently, yes. Mm. Yeah. Because, like, you know, when Gaia frees them, he's in the hospital robes that he had on in Civil War after he was hit. And he doesn't have, like, you know, the machine that Tony built him uh, to use. Uh, so, yeah, he's been a scroll for 10 years. Is that why they made the, the, the really weird choice to have um, Barton Freeman turn around and be like, how long have you been here? It's yeah. like, bitch, how was he supposed to know? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Martin Freeman, my guess that Martin Freeman was uh uh like Agent Ross was uh was captured. Say, <laughs> Sorry. The fuck his character name, that's just my yeah. a- a- Agent Ross, Agent Ross, got it, I got it. Uh he was captured in Bakonda Forever uh when he had the talk with uh Julia Ruiz. You get absolutely no sense of that of that at all. Like, if you want to feel like the weight... I Another thing I found fucking baffling, because that came out of nowhere, was the bit at the end of episode six where they go into that massive warehouse with, like, all the people. Um, who And it's like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? Oh, that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Because that's when I said that, you know, apparently it's a limited series, because that points to another Marvel comic. Uh... The Harvest, uh, and you know that's another comic run. It's still like connected to Secret Invasion, but it's like. But there's absolutely no setup for that. No, it, they just and, and, and there's no implicate. There's there's no um indication of how um uh uh what's her name Sonia is that Olivia Coleman's name? Yes. Yeah, Sonia knows anything about it. Uh, they just she just takes it, and and it's. So it's like, wh- who's, whose operation was this? Why are there so many people here? Clearly, this is the way they've been hiding the million scrolls that are living on the planet. But like, what? This is, I don't, this doesn't make any sense. Why do you just put this in as a scene with absolute <sighs> So many questions. So many questions. But, uh, and not yeah. Good ones. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but I think they can actually come out of it well if, if they do it well. If that makes sense. Um, so the whole thing, I because the major takeaway from this is not Nick Fury, it's not Sonya, it's not Gaia having all the superpowers. It's nothing like that. It's actually Roddy 
who's gonna we know that he's gonna have armor wars next which mm-hmm. is like about him and i think if they de- do that right uh, uh right then that's gonna be a very amazing thing to witness how Roddy's is gonna handle the whole 10 years missing from his life uh tony dying he's one of his best friends dying and not being there for him uh you know they they can do some very exciting things with this storyline and it can actually be something that turns out very well from secret invasion um yeah i will Nick- say i did think that john t was very good because i think oh, very the good. fact that y- you can really tell that he's not himself yep. is actually quite a, a testament to the way that he played the whole oh thing. yeah um, yeah but, i agree um yeah <laughs> yeah and then uh you know obviously we're gonna see nick fury soon back in the marvels uh so i don't know if, if it's gonna have any effect on that for example are we gonna mention it is it, it, it is it gonna play a part in it like you know that's my question with it because secret invasion again in the comic was huge <laughs> It was a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it felt like they were like they tried to put in a bunch of consequences at the very end of the last very episode, end, yeah. where yeah. they're like, now the president's ordered basically everybody to just start murdering people, and it's like, I'm like, why? <laughs> shame I like Dermot Mul- 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 Yeah, I like yeah. him in all the things I see him. He's very funny. <laughs> yep, he's very good. good. Actor. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm so disappointed in this series. It was one of my... It, it just felt like they had absolutely no idea how to make anybody seem smart. Yeah. Like, I won't lie to you. The whole uh, thing about like misinformation and like not being able to know what c- it can be trusted and all that sort of stuff. Um, the, the, that is... Because the, the, the main villain of... Um, Mission Impossible 7 is an AI entity that they refer to as the entity. And the idea is that like it has infected all of these like really secret um, you know, spaces, uh, CIA sort of like things. Um, and it has the it, you know, it's a true AI, so it has the ability to think for itself. And it like the whole thing is based around this sense of paranoia of being like, we can't trust even the people that we're talking to over our communications because it can mimic voices and all that stuff. Does it so much better? So much better than this entire series. Yeah. You know what was a better secret mission story than this one? Mm-hmm. Peacemaker. I, I, I saw you tweet that. <laughs> yep. Honestly, like, yeah. Just... Like, I know how easy it can be to overcomplicate a narrative, but also you got to complicate it a bit. <laughs> It's uh, there's so many, so many missed opportunities with this one, like, and just, it's like, so annoying. All you like, needed to do is have a couple of people act yeah. as if they're being, you know, led down a path, but actually they know exactly what's going on. Um, and a couple <sighs> of people who um, are believing information that should be coming from sources that are legit, that yeah. aren't actually legit. And, like that moment, you could, like that's when you get betrayal and all this stuff from it. It's just like that's what you want. It's what you want. <laughs> yeah it's not much it's not much but god i'm so disappointed if you can't tell just gonna say it again like you know uh why like i was looking forward to this tv show ever since they announced it basically which was i think even back last year somewhere uh i think we already talked about it at least once like oh secret invasion oh yeah uh uh, yeah, it's 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 a big letdown. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm 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 gonna say it for the first time ever on this podcast or anywhere. Uh, I really hope they slow down. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like, like I'm need, at the point. They need to slow down. They like, need to slow down. Heavily slow down. They need to yeah. slow down. They need to stop taking the piss out of their, all of the VFX houses they keep using. Yeah. It's re- it's a f- it, like and I I understand that part of the issue is that they don't care what the VFX look like. Care that's all I'm saying. Give a shit. <laughs> that's like give a it's shit. It's important Stop. when your movie is full of it or TV show. It's like actually it does matter. Uh, yeah. It, like I feel like Loki clearly speaking of the trailer that just came out. Yep. Loki immediately looks like 
like it's taken a lot longer for them to make that than mm-hmm. they have with a lot of other things. And I think you can fucking tell. Like yeah. immediately, the, all the stuff with the, him glitching looks great. Yeah, so it looks good. Really good. And it's yep. like, oh my God, this is actually what this thing should fucking look like. <laughs> That's how you do it. Like, you know, it's fine. We can wait. Like, it's not like people demanding, like, you mama show, you mama show. It's, it's like, not honestly, like that. Yeah, if you made one movie and one series a year, that would be fine. You'd Great. probably do better from it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what you did for 10 fucking years and we were fine and hyped and whatever. I am still hyped because I still love Marvel. Like it's it's not that just because of this show or, or previous ones, it's going to go away. But I'm like, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I'm really worried that if they don't slow down, first of all, they're going to lose audience. They're going to lose like, you know, soon everything basically. Like, please slow down and just follow your previous recipe it's fine we can't wait <laughs> i mean pay your actors pay your writers pay the vfx team and just and just give us the good stuff because it's there like there are so many good uh sources for these stories and and they did s- so many good things with them and i think if they would just turn back and start doing that again and just take it like one at a time one at a time it would be completely fine completely fine we don't need this many tv shows as well i i watch them because you know my rule but you don't need this many or if if you're gonna make this many just take your time it it is honestly fine (laughs) if we have to wait it's all good there are so many things coming out that you know at this point it's really hard to keep up with everything so i'm like please marvel you can do so much better mm. like just a million times better <laughs> than what this was and i'm i'm still wishing for like a really good sticker and invasion adaptation which i don't know if it's ever gonna happen at this point but maybe i feel like we should also point out that um maybe don't uh one of, one of the things that has been um rightfully getting a lot of flack was the decision to um ai generate their opening sequence oh my god which I skipped every time because I was like, every a, time. Per- person, a person could have done this. You could have gone yep. to the same style and actually had a person do it. Stop it. No, don't do it. Honestly. Uh, it's When I found out that that was AI generated, I, I was like, I'm not watching it. That's my job there. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, you know, in, in a larger scale, it could be my job. As as someone who does art it or whatever, be, it could be your job. It could be it just could be somebody's job. Somebody's you've just job. taken somebody's job. Yeah, AI sucks. Like it's literally collecting other people's artworks it's and just theft. <laughs> and and just putting them together. Like it's true to all the AI freaking effects that you can use. It's true to all the AI photo apps that you can use to change your fucking face into a fantasy character, which you can, you know, get a artist to do for you. I know it's more expensive, but like at least you're getting a real artwork. <laughs> if you know that if you paid an actual artist, you're actually paying for that artist to probably eat for several maybe weeks weeks <laughs> probably weeks so don't don't start doing it please it's uh so disappointing especially like you know from a big company like this that you're gonna choose the easy way out and just use i think AI. it's more obvious that it, or, or it's it's less um surprising that a big company would be doing this like they're the first people to go for it because they they love cutting costs they love it they love not paying people. <laughs> yeah, true indeed. Just look at A24, who just <laughs> agreed to all the points that the sag after gave to them, and they are now allowed to make their movies. That's why we're what a in strikes, shockingly. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you force people into uh, labor situations where they're forced to do more work for less money, you don't get better work out of it. <laughs> no, you really don't. Mm. we are not machines nope <laughs> and that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good thing that we're not work us that way no. um all right how would you rate secret invasion five and i'm being generous <laughs> i have to go with five as well i'm not gonna lie 
I think it's the lowest score that I ever give to any Marvel <laughs> project. Did you hear apparently the last episode got an eight percent of Rotten Tomatoes? I saw, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'm just gonna say it. I don't think it was that bad. Uh, I do. To... I, I do find that funny though. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Marvel, slow down, please. It's slow okay. down. You've taken poor Samuel L. Jackson for granted because he put his whole, you know, so true. Just everything into the uh, that um thing. You you know what's really funny? The really interesting stuff uh, about him that you get in like he gives these monologues in the in the series about like his his family mm. and like yeah. all, you know, all these sorts of things. I think you can really tell that that's the shit that Samuel L. Jackson made up for himself. Because like he's mm-hmm. been doing that for years, he's been like writing little bits and pieces about like what he Nick Fury is as a person, that, like what he's been doing between things, all of that stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's the stuff that he made up. Like, yep, <laughs> yep. all the good <laughs> stuff, all the authentic sounding stuff. It's just just him. Freaking love the train talk. It was about. great. It was so it, good. So good. So good. So vivid, but like in a way that feels like, oh, that's just a man like talking about like experiences he probably had as a child. Yep. <laughs> Uh, just like his story when they are going with the elevator with Steve, uh, where his gamf- grandfather did the music uh, for the elevator in in uh, Winter Soldier. That's a Samuel L. Jackson story. Yeah, there you go. Five out of ten. <laughs> Unfortunately, slow down, Marvel. We will thank you. Don't read a recap. I'm gonna be honest. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> no. You really don't. I mean, if you in a, see really good performances in in a really mid series, then mid. sure. Uh, like you know, I watched it for Amelia and Samuel and Ben and Olivia and and Martin and Don. Uh, that's it. Sad, sad. Look, look at my sad eyes. <laughs> so sad. It's so sad. What have you done to her? <laughs> I put this back so you don't see my sad eyes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, this was our Secret Invasion review. Um, let's see how it goes for Marvel in the next couple of chapters. We have uh, the Marvels and Loki left for this year, I believe. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest. I, st- I haven't watched the trailer for the Marvels and I don't care. <laughs> Fair. I'm gonna watch it because I really like Captain Marvel, so you know I I'm interested. Oh my! I I didn't watch Miss Marvel either. I missed that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just like I, I keep being thinking about, like, oh yeah, I guess that is coming out this year. Loki's really the only thing I give a shit about at this point. Like I watched it, and I was like, oh, there's my boy. There he is. Let's hope <laughs> that this series boy. is gonna be about Tom Hiddleston's Loki and not a Sylvie story again. That it, would be very it feels, good. It feels like. It's more based around him, just based. On I, yeah, look. yeah. I really hope that, like, that's true, and you're not gonna just turn us halfway through to Sylvie and be like, "Oh, that's her story now." And I'm like, she's clearly still a very important part of it. <laughs> sure, be an important part, but don't put fucking don't Tom become, in the... don't become the main character when she's <laughs> when she's right there. <laughs> Oh, I guess oh, I'm still so bad because of that. Because Loki was great, and then. Uh, I just I, we have was, an episode on that, so you know you can watch that. <laughs> it's just like yeah, immediately upon seeing him in the trailer, I was like, ah, oh, right, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that that's that's the character that I've really yeah. been attached to since 2012 exactly. when the Avengers came out. <laughs> Big exactly, and you know what's great about Loki season two that Kiwi Kwan is in it. <laughs> already adorable, and, and just the best, <laughs> just the best. When he showed funny. up, it's like ah. Uh, Yes, already love you so much. <laughs> so yeah, can't wait for Loki. I can't wait for the models. I'm gonna be honest. So let's hope that you know. Would you like to hear a quick fun fact before we finish? <gasps> yes, please. I love fun facts. Tony Curran, or yes. Car- Curran, um, yes. who is in the this series as uh, um, director we- Weatherby, the yes, the MI6, has been in Marvel properties twice before. He was in Thor, The Dark World, as a character called Boar, and he was also in the second season of Daredevil as um, the head of the Irish mob. Which is funny, because I'm pretty sure he's really Scottish. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he is. He's Scottish, okay. 
<laughs> makes sense. It, yeah, makes he's he has been he's littered himself throughout various Marvel properties over the years, and this is just the third time. He's great though. I, I'm, he's great. I'm, he's fantastic. Um, yeah. You sh- if you haven't seen the Vincent um, Van Gogh episode of Doctor Who, that's your that's now your homework because that is a perfect episode of television. There you go. You got in. You have to watch that now. Uh, written by Richard Curtis. See? One more reason to watch it. Uh, all right. So this is us and our secret invasion talk. We're going to be back with, I think, catching up on things next I time. Wanna, do we not want to talk about... I feel like we need to talk about Good Omens. Oh, that's true. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We do. Okay. Then we, that's gonna, gonna be... we do need to do an episode of Good Omens. Yeah, that's, that, that's going to be the next one. Sorry about that. It makes sense. I have very exciting news, though. You know what I'm going to watch this week? And I'm so excited. Mag 2, The Trench. Oh. I want, I'm, it's going to be the first movie of the year. And I can't wait to watch it on the big screen. How Jesus said a bit stop freaking you know mega look at the shark. Fair enough. Why, why not? <laughs> like, sometimes you just got to watch a big fucking shark kill a bunch of people for a few hours. <laughs> yes. I'm so excited. I hope it's going to be dumb and it's going to know it's dumb and then it's just going to be a ton of fun and I'll be happy. <laughs> Damn right. That's, sometimes you need that. Let's be honest. Yeah, like, absolutely. This is why I love the Venom movies. There you go. Easy peasy. This is me. Like I just love big monsters eating people. So let's fucking go with it. Anyway, until then, watch movies. Watch movies. Go to the cinema. Yes. So many things on at the moment. So many good things. This is my happy Prove right now. to all of the big producers that we want to be seeing uh, new movies in the cinema. We really do. Back to the table. Yes. The union supporting podcast. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye.